Technology moves so fast that every year we're seeing new visual and technical landmarks on screen. And though the big hitter movies mostly tend to get credit for their groundbreaking inventiveness, every so often a film won't quite receive the praise it deserves for helping the industry grow and improve. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 movie innovations that happened earlier than you think. Number 10. Performance Capture – Star Wars Episode 1 – The Phantom Menace Performance capture is an extremely commonplace event in blockbuster filmmaking these days. While with Andy Serkis popularizing the technique through his transformative, digitally assisted performances as Gollum in the Lord of the Rings franchise, King Kong in Peter Jackson's 2005 remake, and of course Caesar in the new Planet of the Apes trilogy. That's not to forget the brilliant performance capture work in James Cameron's Avatar, nor Josh Brolin's fantastic turn as Thanos in the last two Avengers movies. But long before all this, even before Gollum made it famous, performance capture was employed on another hit tentpole movie. Though it's no secret that Ahmed Best portrayed Jar Jar Binks in the Star Wars prequel trilogy, a lot of fans assume that Best simply provided the divisive voice work for the character, while his movements were traditionally animated. Hell, when Wired wrote up a rundown of the history of performance capture a few years ago, Best's name was nowhere to be seen, prompting him to call the outlet out on social media. In a longer statement, he said, Jar Jar helped create the workflow iteration process and litmus test for all CGI characters to this day. On some days, the code was being written in real time as I was moving. To deny Jar Jar's place in film history is to deny the hundreds of VFX technicians, animators, code writers, and producers their respect. There's a joke I like to use when talking about this stuff. Jar Jar walked so Gollum could run. Gollum ran so the Na'vi could fly. And Best isn't wrong, love or hate Jar Jar, but his expressiveness as built on top of Best's on-set motion-captured performance was the early precursor to the more sophisticated and convincing performance capture work we see today. Number 9. Digital Face Replace – Jurassic Park it's now basic practice for action films to use CGI to replace a stunt person's face with that of the actor they're doubling for, to give a more convincing impression that the movie star is actually in far more greater danger than they really were on set. This gives filmmakers far more options for how to shoot action coverage, rather than having to film strategically to hide stunt doubles' faces. In addition to modern movies employing the tactic, perfectionist filmmakers have even gone back and retouched their classic movies. For the 2017 3D re-release of Terminator 2 Judgment Day, for example, James Cameron replaced the incredibly obvious motorcycle-riding T-800 body double with a CGI mask of Arnold Schwarzenegger's face, and it looks pretty much perfect. But digital face replace as a technique actually precedes the CGI revolution of the mid-90s and was first used in one of Hollywood's early visual effects blockbusters, none other than 1993's Jurassic Park. In a third act scene where Lex, played by Ariana Richards, falls down a vent and dangles for a moment, we see Lex momentarily stare up at the audience, in what was actually an on-set mistake by the stuntwoman performing the scene. Without time to reshoot the shot, Spielberg instead employed cutting-edge VFX to paste Richards' face on the body of the stuntwoman. And only with more recent higher-resolution releases of the film have audiences actually been able to notice the CGI at all. Sure, the stuntwoman's muscle tone and body type are clearly not that of a teenage girl, but even so, it's remarkably impressive for a near 30-year-old effect to pass muster so easily. Number 8. Found Footage – The Connection Found footage is one of the most influential cinematic subgenres of the last two decades. Popularized, of course, by the immense success of 1990s lo-fi horror smash The Blair Witch Project. And while genre fans will quite rightly point you to both the last broadcast, released the year prior to Blair Witch, and 1980s Cannibal Holocaust as prototypical found footage offerings, its beginnings actually go much further back. Shirley Clarke's 1961 film The Connection was an early stab at both the found footage film and the mockumentary, revolving around a budding filmmaker who hangs out with eight drug addicts waiting for their hookup and quickly gets dragged into their lurid world. Though a drama rather than a horror film, The Connection adheres to all the expected stylistic tenets of found footage, namely characters who acknowledge the presence of the camera and even opening with a title card explaining that the film's footage was assembled by the disappeared filmmaker's cameraman. While the style didn't connect with mainstream audiences until many years later, Clark's film laid the groundwork for one of cinema's most distinctive emergent genres. Number 7. Bullet Time – Jumanji The impact of The Matrix on blockbuster cinema can't ever be underestimated, with its hyper-creative use of state-of-the-art Oscar-winning visual effects inviting a slew of inferior imitators in the two decades since. 
The film was of course most lauded for its complex slow motion effects, specifically bullet time, in which a purpose-built camera rig allowed the Wachowskis to capture a 360 degree image around their actors during heightened action beats. Though the most iconic effect in the movie is unquestionably the sequence where Neo dodges a series of bullets on a rooftop, another memorable scene at the end of the movie sees him flat out stopping the bullets through sheer force of will. But four years before The Matrix hit screens, an extremely similar effect was first employed in 1995's Jumanji. At the end of the movie, the villainous Van Pelt, played by Jonathan Hyde, fires his rifle at Alan, Robin Williams. But as Alan already said the word Jumanji, the game itself stops the bullet mere inches from his face, before sucking it and Van Pelt back into the game. It's a primitive version of the effect, no question, and The Matrix did so much more with bullet time as an idea, but Jumanji deserves a measure of credit for actually achieving it first. Number 6. 3D CGI – Future World if you ask most people what the first movie was to use 3D CGI effects, most will tell you that it's 1982's undeniably groundbreaking VFX feast, Tron. But in actuality, 3D CGI made its small but significant debut six years prior in the Westworld sequel, Future World. Though the film itself was largely panned by critics, Future World is nevertheless an important milestone in the development of contemporary CGI, given it was the first movie to feature 3D visual effects, with the film's clone creation sequence showing off digitally created 3D images of hands and faces being cloned. It's a brief scene, yet it allowed early CGI pioneer Ed Catmull, who eventually became the president of Pixar, to throw the gauntlet down to the rest of Hollywood. Without Future World's breakthrough, the likes of Star Wars, Tron, The Abyss, and so many other VFX trailblazers simply wouldn't have been possible. Number 5. CGI Nudity – Machete Replacing a stunt double's face in post-production to ensure an actor's safety is one thing, but over the last decade, it's also become increasingly common for studios to use CGI to place modest performers in nude scenes that they otherwise wouldn't be comfortable with. The most famous example is unquestionably Lena Headey's extremely impressive CGI nudity in Game of Thrones' fifth season finale. But digital body doubles were also used for both Olivia Wilde and Leslie Mann in the 2011 comedy The Change-Up, and allegedly many other productions we don't even know about. The earliest major instance of CGI nudity, however, came in 2010's Machete, in a scene where Jessica Alba appears to stand in the shower in the nude. Instead, Alba actually wore white underwear to shoot the scene, which was then painted out in post-production. Aside from a slight blur around the breast area, it's completely convincing, and with CGI becoming ever more impressively photoreal with each passing day, don't be surprised if more actors defer to digital doubles in the future. Number 4. The first fully CGI movie character – Young Sherlock Holmes A major landmark in the development of CGI as we know it was the ability for effects houses to produce not merely 3D effects, but fully 3D CGI characters that the audience could feel something for. Terminator 2 Judgment Day is understandably credited with popularizing this, given the utter brilliance with which the villainous T-1000 is depicted in its terrifying liquid metal form. But six years earlier, Lucasfilm was actually responsible for delivering the first persistent CGI character in the 1985 cult classic Young Sherlock Holmes. With the brief but memorable presence of a knight made entirely out of stained glass pieces, the sequence was devised by Lucasfilm's John Lasseter, who of course would go on to become Pixar's CCO and direct their groundbreaking fully CGI animated film debut, Toy Story. The effect in the film took a stonking six months to produce, despite lasting just 30 seconds. Yet impressively, it still holds up rather well 35 years later. Number 3. The Single Take Movie – Time Code 1917 has received plenty of praise for its admittedly incredible execution of the movie-in-a-single-take gimmick, even if, like most entries into this showy subgenre, it was of course executed by digitally blending shorter takes together in post-production. There are, however, a small class of films which have actually executed an honest wanna. That is, shooting a feature-length movie in a single take for real. Among the most high-profile examples include Victoria, Lost in London, and especially 2002's magnificent Russian arc. But two years earlier, director Mike Figgis beat it to the punch with his mind-bogglingly ambitious drama Time Code. If the single-take movie is a sure madman's escapade, Figgis' experimental concept was nothing short of glue-huffingly insane. Time Code is comprised of four separate 90-minute continuous shots, 
each taking up a quarter of the screen, all of which were actually filmed at the same damn time. Incredibly, the cameras often capture the same scene from a different perspective, and actors being passed from one quadrant to the next, with the camera operators having to ensure they don't blow the whole thing by accidentally getting another camera in their shot. It took Figgis and his cast, including the all-star likes of Salma Hayek, Stellan Skarsgård, Gian Triplehorn, Kyle MacLachlan, Saffron Burrows, Holly Hunter, and many more, 16 attempts to get a usable, completed take. And though the film benefited from its loose improvisational style, it's still a massively underappreciated achievement that preceded its more popular forebearers by quite a few years. Number 2. Digital De-Aging – Waterworld one of the most emergent filmmaking techniques in recent years has been digital de-aging, the ability for filmmakers with big enough budgets to make actors look markedly younger through CGI, typically for the sake of flashback scenes. This has been memorably used in the likes of Tron Legacy, a ton of Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, and most recently, The Irishman and Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. The effect is largely accepted to have debuted in X-Men The Last Stand, with Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen having decades shaved off their faces to play young versions of Professor X and Magneto. But a more subtle and basic equivalent of de-aging was first employed in the 1995 blockbuster dud Waterworld, where star Kevin Costner reportedly ordered the film's VFX team to fix his receding hairline. It certainly vibes with the consensus that Costner was an egomaniac on the set of Waterworld, but at least he inadvertently helped blaze the trail for Hollywood to take digital touch-ups so much further in the future. Number 1. Rotating Sets – When the Clouds Roll By Far away from the wizardry of CGI, we have a classic but notoriously expensive movie trick – shooting a scene on a rotating set to give the impression that the characters are moving in jarringly unnatural ways. By far the most memorable examples of this are the gravity-defying hallway fight in Inception and the unforgettable centrifuge jog in 2001 A Space Odyssey. And while many might tell you that the movie which pioneered the effect was Stanley Donen's 1951 musical comedy Royal Wedding, in which Fred Astaire famously dances on the ceiling, its genius actually goes back more than three decades prior. The 1919 comedy When the Clouds Roll By featured a sequence where star Douglas Fairbanks appears to walk on the ceiling of his character's home during a surreal dream. Honestly, it still looks terrific today, so one can only imagine how utterly beside themselves audiences would have been an entire century ago. Though it's fair to say that Donan, Stanley Kubrick, and Christopher Nolan all took the concept to far more adventurous heights in their respective films, filmmakers Victor Fleming and Theodore Reed deserve immense credit for pulling it off first and during the infant years of cinema, no less. Let me know down in that comment section which movie innovations are your favourite and if you know of any that happened earlier than everybody else thinks they did. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You can come say hi to me on my Twitter if you like, where I'm at JessMcDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more content.